Now, the worst flooding in almost 100 years has hit Russia and Kazakhstan, forcing the evacuation of more than 100,000 people. The flooding in the Urals and western Siberia has been caused by unseasonably warm temperatures, which has melted snow. In the Russian city of Orenburg, home to half a million people, the water has risen to dangerous levels. Thousands of people have left the city. Our Russia editor, Steve Rosenberg, reports. In places, Orenburg is a city submerged. Roads turned into rivers by the worst flooding here in living memory. Evacuation underway is the message for anyone still living here. All the houses are flooded, says the local mayor. He's sailing down the streets, surveying the devastation. Spring floods are common in Russia, but not on this scale. It's thought the combination of heavy rain and rapidly melting snow in warm weather caused rivers to burst their banks. In Orenburg, thousands have left their homes or been helped to leave by emergency services and by volunteers. Everything was dry yesterday, she says. The water came at night so fast. And look what damage it's done inside the houses. The floating fridge, a reminder of the destructive power of water. And flooding has affected towns and villages across the Ural Mountains and western Siberia. Beyond Russia, too. This is neighbouring Kazakhstan. Here, 100,000 people have been evacuated from the flood zone. Meanwhile, other Russian regions are preparing for flooding as water levels continue to rise. Steve Rosenberg, BBC News, Moscow. Well, Anastasia Bagrova is a journalist for the Kazakh news agency, Retel. She gave me an update on the latest in Kazakhstan. Uh, we are actually right now expecting the second wave uh, of the flooding on the north and on the west on, and on the east, uh, next to the Russia border. For right now, as far as I know, um, about 86,000 people were evacuated and nine are still 9,000 are still in the shelters. They will probably need a temporary housing because their uh, homes were destroyed completely. And the government are promising them help, but we don't know how it uh, goes after all of this. How prepared were the government and indeed the locals for the flooding? Well, it's a huge shock basically for the people because people were completely unprepared. And uh, the government, they told us everything goes according to plan. But, but until it wasn't, just, you know, the uh, situation, the situation uh, changed very quickly. So people had no chances to, you know, just uh, do something, uh, for example, to save their livestock or their properties to prepare some sand sandbags or anything. So um, it's just emergency mode. And some people had loans, for example, in a bank for just to build their houses, and now they lost everything. Well, uh, before that, government told us that they've spent about 15 or uh, $16 million to prepare for this, but eventually it wasn't enough. So we don't know for sure, was it negligence or corruption? But the, um, our president told us that he ordered to start criminal investigations. And how are the authorities co uh, coping with this? Are they likely to need help from Russia to uh, help with the clear up operation and where people go? I assume emergency shelters have had to open. Emergency shelters, uh, yes, it's, it's, it's open. People uh, live there for, for sometimes, we don't know for how long, but uh, they are promising temporary housing before everything will be rebuilt. Well, Russia really isn't helping to us. We're on, on our own. And uh, some, some neighbors, for example, last time Kyrgyzstan sent us help. And uh, basically, we don't have any... Um, help from other countries. Uh, we are, for right now, we're coping with this. But uh, Russia, I don't know. No, they do not uh, have sent any help, really. That's Anastasia Bagrova in Kazakhstan.